Steve Lewis, I'm from a band called Food Jim Yagi, and uh, we've got a record coming out um, this May called Artificial Sweeteners on Yet Prop Records, and uh, we're going to have a look at one of the tracks today, which is called Acid to My Alkaline. Um, so I'll start showing you through it, I guess. Um, so I'm just going to take you through the drums first of all, like start off with the drums, and then we can move on to the other parts of the song. But uh, this was we kind of, we've got this 606 uh, sample which came off the funk box which is on the iPad, uh, which I think Dave, the guy I work with, he, he made this beat up and he's, it was his idea to have a, this kind of drum roll here, that kind of, uh, I suppose it's a bit like New Order. Um, and what I've done there, all I've done there is I've, I've just put a bit of EQ on it. Um, Quite extreme EQ by the looks of it, uh, but I then put this. Um, it's one of my favourite plugins. Is it's a Decapitator Sound Toys, um, which I really like. It, it's like a, it's meant to emulate an analog distortion as opposed to a digital distortion, and uh, it sounds really good on synths and drum machines. Anything it sounds really good on anything. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I just when when I do these things, I often just a preset on and then start fiddling around with it like you do um, and you've got like a high cut it's quite nice and you've got the tone here which is can really shape the sound and make it you know I think for this because I'm going to add another beat on in a minute which I'll show you we wanted it to be quite trebly but quite distorted but you can hear like from the original when I put that on it just gives it a nice kind of distorted feel to it um, uh, and then um, then the kind of main beat, I, I'm not sure how we actually got this beat from it. I pr probably got it from Funkbox actually, and I've because I've not programmed it in, I've, I've probably sampled it uh, and I I'm sampled it fr from the Funkbox because I was using that at the time. Um, so this is this beat, uh, which is, I'll just put this auxiliary on. Uh, right, so yeah, so this is the kick and snare. Um, I don't, so I did all. Uh, all the editing for this um, and but I didn't mix it so we sent this off to a mix engineer Alan Borman uh, so I didn't worry too much about things like this because he would have separated out the kick and snare to mix it separately so that's probably why I've just kept it on the same channel uh, and, and when I'm just like editing and stuff I, I, I do a little bit of EQ just so it's comfortable for me to listen to stuff over and over so it's just like not too boomy and stuff and I've obviously like scooped out a bit of the bottom end there because it's quite it's got that um, and then I've just added, I often use this uh, Renaissance box uh, uh, plugin and uh, it's really simple, it's meant to be for vocals but I just really like it for quickly squashing stuff and it just seems to do it really nicely. So although I might not use it if I was doing the mix myself, it's just really good for um, getting your sound, uh, you know, when you're working and you're just editing and listening to stuff. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's kind of like the main bit. Um, then I've got a crash here, but that, I don't think that comes on until later. That would just be a sample, I guess, from... It's probably, I've got Machine, Native Instruments Machine, although that's come up as a... I, I would have prepared this session to be mixed, so, um, for Alan, so I would have bounced everything down, but I use uh, Native, yeah, Native Instruments Machine for a lot of my drum sounds as well, that, that don't come from drum machines or, or the funk box. Um, and... Yeah, th th this percussion um, was, I think, again from the funk box. I think that all, the, yeah, it just sounds like it's an old retro drum machine style thing. And what I've done here is I've also added in um, some delay. Now, what I, we do a lot of is we kind of, when we get our sounds, rather than using plugins, I do a lot of sort of taking it out, sort of take it out of this. The apogee and sort of run it through the space echo and I really like this even tied uh, pitch factor it's really good for drums and stuff uh, you can really make snares sound quite nice it's, it's just a, a pitch uh, shifting um, but it's got it's got a delay in there and you can use, it's got reverbs on it. it's really nice but yeah I think the sound I'm just about to show you I use the space echo 
uh, to get this kind of sound, that kind of dubby, and it would I would just be running it out and kind of manipulating it till it till it till it was sounding good, uh, and then you know that so if you hear it in context of the whole thing, I keep doing that. It just gives it a nice feel to it, rather than it being dry. Um, bit more of a pain in the ass for Alan to fix, obviously. Because uh, you know it's probably easier if he was adding that in, but um, yeah, I like to like to make my own own sounds up using this method. I, I guess the next thing to look at is the bass. Now we, we track all our bass. Um, we don't really track it here in, in our studio. We go to a Church Road Studios in Hove. It's just around the corner. A friend of ours, Julian Tardo and, and Paul Pasco, the engineers there, and they're really good. And we we tend to track all our bass and guitar no, uh, there and vocals, but everything else is done here. Uh, sometimes we would do guitar here, but um, the reason being is that um, they've got really nice selection of bass amps and they've got um, uh, and really nice microphones and also, uh, especially when it comes, well, I'll get to the vocals in a minute actually, but um, okay, so yeah, so let's have a look at what we've done with the bass. Um, I probably, Matt's probably done a, what normally happens is Matt would have played it the whole song and then I've sort of gone in and as Matt is pretty tight bass player but you know obviously it's sometimes he gets the groove right other than others so I do a lot of cutting and pasting and, and just making sure it grooves but I try and keep a performance because obviously we're electronic and I like to have that balance between it being having a live element so it's not just loops the whole time uh, so it's, um, it's not mixed so but yeah so just listening to that yeah I would have just scooped out a little bit so, so when I'm working again I can hear what's going on. Um, wh what's quite nice about this bass is I've, I've added in a bit of delay again I've, I've taken it out and, and put some space echo on afterwards um, so to get this kind of sort of effect that kind of used in the, I don't know when it was used 60s 70s like sort of Serge Gansberg's kind of sound and it just gives it a little bit kind of just to hear that on its own it's uh, it's just got that nice tape echo. Uh, just gives it that, that feel. Uh, and then moving on, so the bass, let's look at the guitar. I think what's happened with the guitar is that this was the original version that Dave had done on the guitar and I chopped it up a lot to kind of, and we weren't happy with it because it felt like it was chopped up. So. We once this track was finished and Alan had mixed it, we then went back and redid the guitar, which I'm going to show you in a bit. But at the moment, this is kind of like the, uh, the kind of Prince kind of chops. Um, again, I, yeah, like I said, I would have just edited that out. I haven't, I haven't put any stuff on that. I, I missed out. Um, a percussion sound that I've just found that was later down, further down my project, but this is just some. I, I do you know what? I've no idea how, how we made those up. They oh no, I do know how we made those up. That was when we were in with Julian and we were using percussion uh, sounds. Yeah, we were using percussion sounds through this even tide, so that, that's why it sounds like a delay. I think I think it was like a shaker or something. And so that's actually, yeah, we were kind of quite into, we like to have our live elements in, 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 in our loops. So there's kind of like real, you know, it's not programmed percussion. So, yeah, that's that. Yeah, so I guess kind of like the basics of the track. And then, um, then I kind of added in, um, let's just get all the guitar. There's these other guitars as well. But then I added in... Uh, Keyboards basically. Oh, yeah, so this keyboard line was from the Moog. Um, yeah, it's just like a. I would have played that. And uh, I've probably tightened it up so I sound like I'm really, a really good keyboard player. Uh, so yeah, I've, yeah, so this loop here, that would be from the Moog Rogue. Uh, and then I put that through a tape echo as well, which is a bit of a theme with this song. Um, Tape echo. But you see, it just gives it, just makes it sound great, the tape echo. Uh, and then I've added in, I kind of, with the tape echo, I would have uh, whacked up the intensity to kind of get that, 
you know, the, when the delay doesn't stop. And then I've kind of chopped that that up a little bit. So, uh, I'll show you, it'll make sense. Play it here. Get this kind of effect here that's happening here. So that would be, and that actually, where it goes a bit syncopated, that, that's because the tape on this bass echo is a bit broken, so it kind of breaks up every now and then, which I just really liked, kind of like that element. So. Yeah, so that's kind of, so what I do a lot of is I will record, that this probably, I recorded probably like a whole chunk of this of me just mucking around and that, but I might only use like a little fraction of it. That's kind of what I do, you kind of just pick out little, little, parts you like. What's happening here with, with this tape echo is I've just put a, a, a fade on it, uh, like with Pro Tools you can kind of see where that line is, so that's fading up the sound, um, just so it kind of sounds like it almost like it's reverting it, coming into it, so it would have been that, and I've just, you know, put that, uh, put, the, put this fade on like that, just to kind of, you know, bring it into it just to give it a dynamic you know so it's not straight in the whole time these are from the sub fatty um don't know if you can see that that's that synth there that i bought last year about the time i was doing this track so i just wanted to get it in there uh but it's a really nice synth um yeah i've just it's kind of like, i think i just put two synths together i can't remember yeah I, sometimes like with my synths i like to sort of record the same thing and sort of get stereo effect uh so let's just listen to this one. Yeah, that's kind of probably me playing lower and then together they kind of just sound a bit more fuller and a bit nice and I pan them left and right. Uh, not hard left and right, sort of about like that. Uh, just makes, can make, really bring simps to life a little bit uh, if you double track them. Um, and so that's that keyboard part. And then there's this guitar part that's quite interesting down here. Yeah, down the bottom here is a guitar part that was sort of added in the end that Dave made this melody up. Um, I'll solo them. And again, I've, prob I've, I've sort of layered it up. So let's just listen to the, the, the raw one would have been this. So that's like just Dave playing in. Uh, and then I've, I've put it through this the pitch flex on this probably to get like, make it a bit more, si there's, there's a guitar synth in, built in this, uh, which is a bit random. Um, it doesn't always uh, follow it very well, you know, follow Dave's guitar, because the nature of guitars, you know, the, 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 with this, you don't really get the sustain you get on, um, you get on synthesizers, so they sort of break up in a really nice way, but, uh, so, that, so you get that kind of, a little bit more of a synthy sound. And the two of them together just sound so much better to me than, than that. It just sounds a lot more exciting. And then I put a bit of tape echo on. Like I said, it's a bit of a theme, tape, tape echo. Just to fill it out. And it sounds like I'm playing with the intensity live. Because it seems like it's getting more intense. Yeah, like there. It's probably just sort of peaking that up. So it's kind of live-ish, sort of dub, I suppose. Yeah, these are samples I think that we got. That up with, yeah, the, these percussion samples that should be up in the drums. Uh, is that they, they, they were just? I, I think I explained earlier. We did, we did like a whole thing where we were just making up sounds using s different percussion instruments, and they were just going for a delay. Um, they were going through this again, uh, which kind of makes it sound a little bit more synthetic, I think, in a nice way. That's quite a nice one. It's quite a nice example. That sort. Of, yeah, so in context, it's just nice little, nice little nuances in sound that kind of, so the tracks, I, I kind of, we always try and put little bits in the way we edit so it doesn't become too repetitive. Uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, we are loop, we're sort of doing, we're a combination of trying to be live, but we also, I'm doing a lot of looping and looping beats, so it's nice to have little things in it that kind of, the little details. So yeah, just in context. So kind of play off the riff. And then you're here to do it now. Going back to the bass, I forgot about this. At the end of the song, um, it gets kind of like goes down to being like got sort of tight funk uh riff We've added in this uh, 101 just to kind of thicken up the bass. So there's still the there's still the acoustic bass with it. I 
probably would have made sure it's really tight to the bass guitar as well. So it's almost like I would have just sort of edited it so it's following the bass guitar, just thickening it up rather than it. Because with bass, you kind of need it to be tight. You don't want it to be flabby. And uh, so that's why that's, that's why I've sort of edit, edited that up and chopped it up as much as it I have there. And these are like minor details now, but there's... <laughs> like Dave had this um, guitar pedal, which i not here, unfortunately. It's a warm jet. It's uh it's a guitar pedal that was used by Brian Eno in 1976 or something on uh, Warm Jets track. Uh, and it's like this fuzz pedal that I think it's a Wem fuzz pedal. And some guy in Birmingham, um, sort of boutique guys, kind of had the schematic diagrams and kind of made this, made this, it copied it basically. So that we, we used it quite a lot on this record, but it has a kind of breaks up. I don't know if you can hear that, but it breaks up really nicely. You can even see it on the waveform actually. Let me just zoom in. The way it kind of follows it. You see it breaks up here. It kind of just, just sounded nice to us. Um, and uh, that is pretty much the music. There's some other bits that I added later on, but I'll get to that in a minute. But let's look at the vocals. Um, vocals, like I said, we would have tracked them at Church Road Studios. Um, but I, I would have done a lot of editing um, because I comp it, you know, so we would have taken, Dave would have done it two or three times and we would have comp, comp the best version, you know, and if he got one little bit wrong. Um, with, with Dave's vocals, it, it, um, it's quite important. Uh, he's not really singing, he's kind of speaking, so it's really important that it's in rhythm, it's in time, you know, it's, it's uh, kind of... So this is Dave's vocals on the You are the acid to my alkaline. So you are the acid to my alkaline. And then I think it's me singing on it as well. Um, I'm sort of just doing the backing vocals. Um, you are the. Uh, and, and I would just stick this again. I would stick the, the R box on, um, just to kind of help me, so I can make sure I can hear the, the detail of it, especially when I'm, I'm editing it. And then there's me in there as well. You are the acid to my alkaline. It's just to thicken Dave up, really. I mean, I'm just uh, kind of Dave's the main singer, so I'm. You are the acid to my so I'm alkaline. Slightly bassier. You are the acid to my. It just kind of gives it a nice chorus effect, and that is it. That on the vocal front, I believe. Uh, I think I did some high stuff actually. You can mix water with spirit. Uh, oh yeah, I kind of do these silly high vocals every now and then. You can mix water with spirit. Of tap. So it kind of give it a funk thing. It sounds quite nice in context on its own. It doesn't. You can mix water with spirit. Of tap and tap. So all that stuff's pretty much done live, other than a bit of comping to, you know, make it. Um, make sure I've got the best performances. So putting that in context, I believe. You are the acid to my alkaline. You are the acid to my alkaline. Okay, so that's all we've got time for now. If you want to see the full version, it's in Computer Music 207. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android and in print.